It's just dead. All right, team. Okay. So we're going to talk about the cricket for about 15 minutes. And then, what do we got up here? Oh, yeah, right. So great game this morning. I'm sure you were watching. For some reason, I couldn't sleep. I was up for about 3.45 to watch, uh, to listen, actually, to read, to read New Zealand um, beating South Africa in a nail-biter, complete heart stopper. So 45,000... Kiwis were automatically very, very happy. They could have been very, very sad, but they're in a big stadium together. Could have gone wrong. All right, so there's your cricket update. That's the semi-final. This is important news, people. And um, the winner plays India or Australia. Mm. Who are playing, I think, tonight or tomorrow night at the SCG. The Sydney Cricket Ground. And then the winner plays at the MCG, the Melbourne Cricket Ground. 100,000 screaming Australians. What's that? <laughs> what you should watch is this. Okay. Wherever we go, we bring it's going to be an ad, probably. Staying connected to what it's going to be an ad. Let me just because every run matters. So does come on, load. Blocked by UVM. Wherever we go. Okay, we have to have an ad. Staying connected to what we. It's an ad for um, Indian expats because there are so a billion the Indian uh, people in the world and not so many people from other countries. So. For an additional twenty dollar month. Come on, people. It's very important. And here we go. It's down to this. So difficult to communicate in this crowd. The crowd is going absolutely berserk here. Okay. What an atmosphere. What a day out at Eden Park. Is this working? What an absolute privilege to be here today to win the semi-final. It's come down to the last six balls of the game. Dale Stain, Daniel Danny Vittori, left arm, orthodox spin, great player. Been around for a long time. This is Dale Stain, the most fearsome bowler in the world. So in cricket, you're allowed to hit people. Absolute with a ball. That's here. fine. Strike. An Australian, a great Australian three three got done. Runs the boy. Beautifully done. So there's six balls left. Very, very strike. close. South Africa's in front. It tense as hell. Um, an Australian cricket five. died this year. Actually. Tragedy. They're hitting the back of the head. Elliot hits. Has he hit a gap? No, he hasn't hit yeah, a gap. Yeah, good kill. It's an absolute disaster. Tragedy. They're hitting the back of his head. Yeah. It was a test cricket well, for Australia. Champion play. It's a tragedy. I mean, it happened. I got, I ended up in a hospital for smashing this part of my head. And New Zealand may have their nose in front again. So three balls Doesn't left. Happen. I know you understand this game. Three balls left. left. And they need, they can tie. South Africa always loses in these Pretty knockouts. Well. They've been losing since the 90s. The uh, home run is a, is a six. You can hit out of the ground. So you get four runs if it hits the... So they snuck a bye. I'm going to give you these words. The fielding they positions in cricket are they fantastic. Elliot to have one. They're happy for him to have one. Who's a South African commentator? That's a six. That is a home run. And he is a South African. He was born in South Africa and he moved South to New Zealand. The plucky New Zealanders, it's awesome. Second <laughs> dramatic match here at Eden. Devastation, Park. right? So one world at one part of the world is sad. It with a six against right. Australia. Grant Elliott this time. All right. That was amazing. That was amazing. That was absolutely amazing. That was absolutely amazing. All right. So a heart stopper. All right. All right. So actually in cricket, you can play for other countries, but you have to spend four years living there first. It's not, you can't just go wherever you want. So it's quite, you know, it's this kind of old school sort of thing. So he moved to, he moved to, uh, yeah, he gave up on South Africa and moved when he was about 22. Anyway, great moment. <laughs> uh, all right, let's, let's calm down there, boys. All right, okay. I'm pumped. It's great. So, uh, I'm, I'm pulling for New Zealand. They, they always seem to manage to get to the semi-finals and lose. And there are only a 4 million New Zealanders. There are no New Zealanders in the world. But you'll find them, right? If you find a cult somewhere, 
there'll be a New Zealander in it, right? They roam all around the world. There's always an Australian too, but the New Zealanders are the truly surprising ones. Okay. Um, my terrent human beings. Okay, so exams came back. This is a good, this is a good distribution actually, humans. We did well. I know it wasn't fun. It was a hard exam. This is good. If you zoom in on the icons, then you have the six icons associated with the three exams that we did. So that was good. Uh, this is a comparison from a few years ago. You can see a much more spread out histogram. Team did not do so well. So good. Really good. It's the best I've seen, I think. Um, okay, that was kind of the hard exam, right? And the next part, we're sort of rebooting a little bit. We're going to do some other stuff. We're going to work on eigenvectors and eigenvalues. And that is still all connected because that's what we do. Uh, let's see. So, and we had the... Okay, we had this, we had the assignments. Your grades, you can check them out here. And Galaga is the new one. You should play Galaga, it's a great game. Galaga, yeah, right, I know. Galaga. <laughs> Do you want me to speak in a different accent? I could speak like, no, I, I do actually, I have a whole bunch, but I'm not going to do it. I could get arrested for it. Uh. What's that? New Zealand, so New Zealand accent is a bit, so pug and pun and all this sort of stuff, they say they're, they're a bit more English in their accent. They think our accent is ridiculous. But we don't really care. Australians don't care. New Zealanders hate Australians. <laughs> so... And I come from the country, and in the country you speak very slowly, and you speak like this, and there are some sheep over there, and we should go and get them, and <laughs> yeah. And it's hot, so you don't want to waste too much time. All right, people, I know we're struggling. All right, you're liberated from that second challenge level. Now we have to warm ourselves up for the next one. And it's going to be about eigen things, which you may have come across in other places, if you have, that's good, but we're going to do it in a beautiful way here because that's what we do. And the first thing we're going to talk about is powers of square matrices. For some reason, that is a big deal. Right? Awesome. Very nice. Um, and so we'll get on to, I'll call it eigen things and eigen stuff because I say these sorts of things, but um, eigenvalues, eigenvectors, eigenspaces. And we'll be solving this problem for a while, which is kind of weird, right? So it's, uh, I need to get up my chalk. Look at this. Excellent. All right, people. Let's keep it together. What's going wrong? It's falling apart. What's going on? Team. 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 Come on. Come on. Okay. All right, so this is going to be a situation where this is an N by N now. N by 1, N by 1, and this is a number. And we will know this, we won't know this, or this, or this, but magically we can figure it out. Because we're awesome. Okay, so, and then we're going to have to go into this kind of weird detour, a very Dr. Seuss-like experience in the, in the world of determinants. Strange business. We'll have to do that. So, I actually, also, I want to ask you, maybe you've seen this, but I was going to ask you this. I, I'm going to give you 10 seconds, I want you to think of a number, I want you to write it down, and I want you to not change it. And if you've heard of this, just, you know, take yourself out. Be honest. So it's a funny question, but just answer it honestly. So what's the most random number between 1 and 20? I want you to think of a good random number between 1 and 20. The most random one. Write it down. Be honest. Don't change it. Write it down. All right, let's see how we go. How many people said one? One. Two? Yes? Three? Four? Two? Five? One? Hands up high. This is zero here. Six? Two? No changes. Seven? Is that how you say it? One, two, three, four. Okay, hands up high for that one. That was a good one. That's six. What are you doing? One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Oh, I was, oh, was seven, right? Was I asking seven? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's good. I like it. Eight. Two. 
binary people. Nine. One, two. Ten. One, two. Yes. Honesty is good here. Eleven. One. Twelve. Thirteen. One, two, three, four, five, five, I think. Fourteen. One, two. Fourteen is good, I like it. Sounds good. Fifteen. One. Yes. Sixteen. One. Seventeen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Do I count everyone? Eighteen. One, two, three. Nineteen. Mm, yes, that's good too. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Twenty. You're very perverse, aren't you? One, two, three. Okay. So it's a ridiculous question. I first saw this from a professor in chaos um, when I was a child, 1992 or three. And so this happens a lot. You can look this up. This is a weird thing. So. What, I mean, a random number is a random number, right? But people don't think about random numbers. So what's a good random number between 1 and 100? Want to yell out a good random number? Which one? That's good. 17 is good still. 37? 37, yes. Rock solid. 73 is good too. Okay, so, so <laughs> the argument for this can go, you know, you won't you choose 1 or 20 because they're at the ends. I mean, you can, but you can kind of give a little funny just so argument. 1 or 20, it's at the ends. Um, even numbers, just that doesn't feel random, so they're out, so we've got to get rid of all of those. Right? We can't have fives because five is such a common thing. We've got the five fingers going on, and multiples of five are out. Three is too simple, so we get rid of this one. Three is too simple. <laughs> multiples of three, out. Oh, this is completely insane. Right. Where are we now? So 7 and 13 are lucky numbers, so they don't feel really random. 11 is two ones, just not enough style there, that's not good enough. 19 <laughs> is too close to 20. <laughs> but we can't, you know, the ones we got to at the end, 8 here, 13 here, there's a bunch here, so, right? They're the ones that people did go for. So that's math plus humans, right? You gotta, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I put a YouTube video up of this, right? A little thing. It's 20 seconds long. It got 3,500 views or something straight away. And it got a bunch of hate as well. Like, there's a lot of people saying, oh, this is really funny. Because it's a, you know, it's fine. But of people going, that's not randomness, blah, blah, blah. You don't understand randomness. It's like, no, you don't understand people. Okay. All right. Humans are not good at randomness. All right. So apparently I have to get Snapchat as well. All right, so we've learned some things. Should I, should I try to teach the course through Yik Yak? <laughs> How is Yik Yak going for us? Good God. <clears throat> All right. Let's just put, you can pretend that didn't happen. Or well, you can learn something about humans. It's good. All right. Okay. Okay, all right, so we're going to have fun. I'm going to give you some, a uh, little bit of motivation for this next part, which I think is fantastic, and I, you know, I'm obviously very biased, but okay, so, uh, so it's square matrices only for a while. Matrices ahead. And if you remember, even when we had rectangular ones, sometimes we'd come up with A transpose A or AA transpose, and they're square as well. So... Square is fine. That's a big deal. So that's, a, that's an important little note here. So these are, um, uh, OK, let's write it like this. Why we love a to the power of n, right? For n equals 1, 2, 3. Right. I'll give you a few little examples where powers of square matrices, because square matrices, you can multiply them together, right? So we get rectangles, we can't do it if they're not square. But we can, we can raise matrices to powers. OK, so I'll give you a couple of quite different examples. So one will be, so this is kind of Markov systems or Markov chains. 
But we can think of it as, okay, I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example. But let's talk about it to start with. So um, let's imagine we have, I'm going to write it, I'll write it like this. All right, x t plus 1 to vector. And that's going to be dependent on the, the uh, at time t plus 1, it's going to be dependent on the, uh, a vector at time t multiplied by a matrix A. So this is going to be an n plus 1, n plus 1, M, uh, sorry, n times, right, n by 1, n by 1, n by n. And the idea is x i will equal the, let's think of it like this, probability a system, we're thinking about a system, I'll give you an example of a system, the state, uh, system is in state i. And this will be at time t, so at time t. Right. And so A is going to be a transition matrix. So you have some probability the system is in one of these states. There are n states it can be in. And so we think of A is a transition matrix. Right? Matrix. And it tells you what the probability, so given that you're in a particular state, what's probably you end up in a new state? So let's, let's uh, think of an example. Uh, and it has conditional, containing conditional probabilities. Let's write that. This is really great. We're going to have very different examples. Containing conditional probabilities. So that, um, that was very enjoyable. Okay, so um, let's think of it like this. So A, we have this notation we've had for a while, AIJ, right? I th let's do it again. I throw jth column. So this is the probability of uh, i given j, right, equals the probability of a uh, state going from uh, uh, of, sorry, of system going from state i to state j. Yep. System going from uh, state i to j. Okay. So lots of things actually have this. So we have to have a couple of things. No, I'll just write down a few little notation pieces. We have to have this uh, of pij. All right, I'll do that. pij has to equal 1, right? So it doesn't have to, but lo let's do this. So that it ends up in a state, right? So we start in state j, and if we sum over i equals 1 to n, so these are the... Uh, next states, it has to go somewhere. So you're in state J, and then you sum over all the other states you can be in, that probably that probabilities have to sum up to 1. Okay, so that's good. And so in general, X of T, right, so this is X of T plus 1, is A of X T by itself, and that's going to be A times just A of X times X T minus 1. Right, so it's a squared. And then that's going to end up, if we go dot, 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 in that way we usually do, so it'll be, end up being a to the t times whatever it was at time t equals 0. So if you know the state of the system at 0, or say, it's in, say, say the system starts off in just one of them, right? one of these things. I'll give you an example. Uh, then we can just multiply it by a to the power of t, and it gives you the probability of where everything is. So we need to understand, so here's our power of a. We need to ha understand how A behaves as you raise it to a power. And that's a, hot, that's a mess, right? So it's going to be a messy thing to do. So we need to uh, under uh, compute, or we'd like to, we need to compute A to the power of T as T goes to infinity, right? To find out a uh, system's long-term behavior. Do we end up with a financial system? Whatever it is. Okay. Okay. So these are these are systems where you can do something simple like this. You can say, given it's in a particular state. All right. So let me let me draw a little example. So you can think of various individuals or various reasons why this might be happening. I guess the traditional one is that this person has had too much alcohol. 
Um, but let's just say they're texting while they're wandering around on a network. So here's our, so we're going to call these states 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this is actually a physical network, right? Okay, good. So you're texting. So we've got a little human here. They've got their little device, in, their magic rectangle in front of them. Random texter. And so they're wandering along, and when they get to a place, they just make a random choice as to where, where to go, right? So they will then randomly go in this direction, this direction, this direction, or this direction. So yes, when I saw, first saw this, it was about being drunk. So you could use that. People like to model, talk about random walks, because this is a random walk on a network, as being uh, an example of someone who's had too much to drink, but that's probably from a, yeah. OK, so let's think about texting. <coughs> we'll make it a public service announcement thing as well. So let's think about this. So let's say that they randomly, wherever they're wandering, they randomly, so they could go, there's a quarter of a chance they go this way, a quarter of a chance this way, and a quarter of a chance this way, and a quarter of a chance they just wander back the other way. They really are lost. OK. So, and if they get to here, then they have to bounce back. If they get to here, they have a half a chance going this way, this way. So what's the long-term behavior of our text? Where are they going to be? So if you imagine you have a big network, that's kind of an issue because you want to find them at the end of the day. Actually, the original version of Google basically used this, which is kind of surprising, right? So imagine now this is the web and you have pages pointing to each other, which humans did early on. Now we have machines doing as well, but humans, you know, this is a web page, it points to this one. It's about cats, obviously, right? And we're talking about this. This may be about dogs over here, but these are all about cats, um, different types of cats. And they point, and, and Google's algorithm profited from this structure that people had put there. And it actually sort of, you know, basically, and we'll come to it at the end of the class, actually. Um, little random walkers, imagine little random walkers wandering around. Okay. So it was a linear algebra problem. All right. So let's write down this, uh, this matrix, and we, we won't be able to solve it because we're not quite there. But let's imagine we have uh, x of t plus 1 which is going to be, at this point, it's going to be a state. It's in state 1, state 2, which means location 1, location 2, right down to here. And that's something times some matrix. A here's our transition matrix here. I'm going to make it more of a square. Yes, that's good. And this will be x1 at time t down to x5 at time t. <coughs> So let's think a little bit about what this would be. So if you're at, if you're, what's the problem you end up at location one at time t plus one, right? So what's the problem you end up here? Well, you can't be at four or five, right? You'll never jump there, right? So the chance that you get there from those two is zero. So this, this entry is this row multiplied by this column. Yep, just normal matrix multiplication. So if we want to figure out what's a, Think of this as a probability that you end up here. It's this guy times this guy. So you could come from 2 or 3. You can't start it yourself because it, you're, if you're at 1, you, you have to walk away from there. There's a quarter of a chance that you come from 3, if you're at 3. Because if you're at 3, you could go in four directions. If you're at 2, half a chance. So it's going to look like this, a half and a quarter. Make sense? Did I do the wrong thing? <coughs> so, if you so what it, here's here's your probably that you're at one now. There's zero chance you'll end up at one at the next point. There's a probably that you're at two. Half the time from that state, you end up at you end up here. Half the time you go to three, and if you're at three, which is in here, you get a quarter of a chance, right? The conditional probabilities. So two is the same kind of story. It's got half a chance you come from one. Uh, so that'll be here. That's one. You can't start it yourself. Quarter of a chance here. Can't come from three or four, or four or five. If you're at three, you could have come from one, two, four, or five. If you come from four or five, you definitely come from four or five, right? They have to go that way. So that's one and one. That's the probability that a five goes to a three, probably goes to four goes to a three. Probably that one goes to a three or two goes to a three, it's a half, because they could wander off in these directions. A half, a half, zero. And then the last ones, four can only come from a three, and five can only come from a th three. And there's a quarter of a chance for each of those. All right, so we have a matrix, and you can imagine giant matrices like this. A very common kind of problem. 
<laughs> so we'll call these, this is a, you'll, you'll see this word, Markov system. So the state of the system at time t plus 1 only depends on the state at time t. It doesn't matter what happened before. You forget everything else. There's no memory beyond the last state. All right. So let's see. So if we sum up these columns, so columns sum to columns sum to one, right? That was a statement we made over here. Right, so every state, every where this little random wandering texture has to go somewhere. So it's conserved; they can't disappear off the network, so they don't get run over or something. Um, <coughs> okay, so here's a little thing. So what's the long-term thing? Right, where are they eventually? So monks tell you. Monks say, look at this vector. Think about this vector. Consider. So this is our a. Consider um, <coughs> the number of friends or the number of connections. Let's, so the degree of each node in network. This is the All right, it could take too long, right? So it's the number of friends. So this so the degree of this one has two, there are two places it can go to. This guy has two places it can go to. This one has four, this one has one. So let's try that one. We'll put x equals um, two, two, four, one, one. Two, two, four, one, one. All right, so these are the, equals the number of places um, connected to node, to node. All right, is that okay? This one has two friends, this one has two friends. Four, one, one. <coughs> Let's look at what that does. A times that thing. Two, two, four, one, one. So it would be this. So there's a, a half here and a quarter here. Right? Zero, zero, zero. So a half of two is one. Um, and we get a one here, so it's a two. There's a half and a quarter here, so we get a one and a, and a, a one here, so another two. Half, half, zero, one, one. So one, 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 four. And then just a quarter of this piece, so one and one. So A times this vector is the vector again. It doesn't change. So this is a stable solution. So this is a stable solution. Right? Unchanged. So these are the kinds of things we're going to be interested in. A matrix comes along, but now it's sort of a gadget. We think about matrices that do all sorts of things, rotate things, behave, and they leave them the same. There are some very special uh, directions that they like. So A likes this direction. Puts a little favorite. It goes favorite. Likes this direction. <coughs> well, the ridiculous thumbs up on Facebook, which has a cuff. It has a cuff. It's very gendered. OK, all right. A likes the direction. I know you don't use Facebook. All right. <coughs> it was from the early 2000s. OK. A likes this direction. <laughs> right? It likes this direction. And in fact, our solution would be, you have to normalize it. It would be this, 2, 2, 4, 1, 1. This is the long, this is the long term probability uh, probability of the system probability of the system, vector, probability vector of the system. Now, we'd have to, we have to figure out how to get to this, and I'm just, the monks have told you this, right? So it turns out the probability that your uh, little random texture here will be at a node is proportional to its degree. And that's true of networks in general, right? I mean, you could have different transition probabilities, but if you've just got a random walker, that's true. That's a pretty cool thing. OK. And so one thing is that it's actually edge space where they're random. So the probability that you'll find them on any, different, on any given edge, that's uniform. But they bunch up according to the degree. How do we get this? 
Yeah, 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 yeah. So this is pulling it out of the air, right? So, so this is, so <coughs> next, we explain how to get this. We have to build up the machinery. I'm just trying to give you an example of a, you know, a, a system. Uh, well, this is one example. I'll give you a couple more. So is that OK? I know. So yeah, so this is being sneaky. <coughs> Monks whisper to you while they push their brooms. OK. All right. <coughs> Look at the degree. OK. OK, good. So that's one example. <coughs> so that's. So that's, okay. <coughs> Monks are very important. Okay, so two, solving, li this is odd, right? So this is this one thing we've got to, we're talking about kind of probabilities here, transitions. Here's something very different, evil calculus. Solving linear differential equations. Now we don't have to do this, but I'm just going to show you some crazy, crazy stuff. So imagine we have this. So you've got dx dt equals, let's use 17, because that's an excellent number, as we've decided. What's the solution to this differential equation? So x is a function of t, right? x equals x of t. So this says x, the change in x at this point in time is, is 17 times whatever x is. Right, so if x doubles, its rate of change doubles. Does anyone know the solution to this? We're not, you know, we don't have, this is not part of the course. We're just, yeah. What kind of differential equation is it? Yeah. What's an e so there's a way to solve this. It's not too bad. By inspection, yeah. Monks. There's actually, so you can do this. You could do this. You could say it's separable. So we could put all the x's on one side, all these things on the other side. So differential equations, the course is kind of funny because it'll give you all the ones we know how to do. But it turns, so it's a bit like saying, here are all these animals we know about in the real world. Um, and then you kind of the whole course is there. And then it turns out there's a gazillion that, you know, we don't know how to, we, we can't solve them, so we won't talk about them. Um, it's, a bit of a, it's a bit of a weird business. So integral of this, what's the integral of 1 over x? Horrible, isn't it? ln of x. What is happening? Integral of 17. T, anything else? Plus c. Awesome. OK, so and we, what, what can we do with this? Yes, all right, awesome. Wow. E, right, e to the c, we'll call it another constant. I'll put a prime there. So this can be e to the ln x is x equals um, some constant times e to the 17t. And this is e to the c prime. So it's growing exponentially. That's, so this is, a, this, is a this is a very fundamental kind of differential equation. You get these things a lot. Uh, you know, things do grow exponentially. They take off. Uh, Ebola, whatever it is, your maybe your um, investments. You know, those are, there are lots of things that have exponential structure. <sighs> yeah, money. Okay, so um, so so that's that's nice. So let's uh, let's let's get an example. How should I do this? I think what I might do is is that dangerous? Okay. So let's think of coupled linear differential equations. And I'll show you something very strange. This is kind of a motivational. It's always motivational. Ah, all right. <coughs> okay, so I'm going to stop there. All right, so let's think about. This is so awesome. Okay. So <coughs> let's imagine we have this. Okay, so now. Consider coupled linear DEs. So there's some relation, there's some connection between them. DX1, DT, it changes in a way, let's say it's 2X1 minus X2. It's some connection to, we have X1 and X2 now. We have two things describing our system. Right, there could be temperature and pressure, how many frogs there are in the world, how many things that eat frogs, right? So this is a kind of a classic 
um, sort of thing that you might solve in different, uh, well, there's, and there's non-linearities and all sorts of things. Uh, you know, foxes and rabbits, okay. Uh, the happiness of New Zealand, the happiness of uh, South Africa. I mean, people even make up these things for marriage and so on. It's very strange. Okay, so, all right, well, let's imagine we have this. DX, so the change in DX2 is, it depends on what X1 is now and X2 is now. DX1 depends on what X1 and X2 are now. Exciting. So, let us make it much better. Let's combine these two great things, calculus and matrices. Put them like that. Just going to put them in a nice little box. And then on the right hand side, we can write 2 minus 1, 3, 2 times x1, x2. Aha, much better. Beautiful. I'm going to say it. This is really beautiful. Okay? So now we have a matrix A. It's just got some numbers in it. So the rate of ch this is now a vector x. And here it is again. So this is the rate of change, and you can imagine this could be an n by 1, dx dt equals ax. So the rate of change of this vector, before we had, we had um, a was stepping you in time, right? It took you from time 7 to time 8 to time 9. Now this is continuous. It's saying how x changes. Right. <laughs> And if you go back here and you look at this, here was, this is, this is our A. It's a one by one. This is a 17. It's a one by one matrix. <laughs> and we, we're not going to go through it all here, but the solution is, somewhat incredibly, it's this, right? So X of T is E to the A the matrix A, and we'll put uh, x of uh, 0 out here, right? initial condition. That should strike you as a bit of a strange thing, right? An exponential of a matrix. You can do this. It's totally fine. And this is a, so this is a, a perfect, and why does it, why do we need powers of, powers of A in here? Okay, so here it is. What's, what's the tail expansion for E to the X? Pretty famous one. Do people know their tail expansions? Let's make it E to the Z equals. Something to do with factorials, good. What's the first term? When z equals 0, you get 1. So we'll have that plus something times z plus something times z squared plus something times z cubed. Factorials. Importance of 2 and z's, right? Good. So a beautiful thing you notice about this. You differentiate it once e to the z, let's differentiate it once. You get a 0. If we use the tail expansion, you get a plus 1. Because of the factorial thing, you get 2 comes down, plus 1 over 1 factorial times z, plus the 3 comes down and cancels that one, 1 over 2 factorial, z squared, plus, which equals e to the z, which is e's business. Right? E, the derivative of e to the z is e to the z. And it's very nice, you can see it in here. So, this is a bananas thing, but we can do it by uh, an expansion. And so we can do that for, you can do signs and logs, you can have a great time. And these really are meaningful things. I mean, this is the solution to that problem. This could be a 5,000 by 5,000 matrix, it's fine. So E to the A by itself, well let's, I guess we'll put a T, is it's the identity because one, one is the one, is, we've got a one. Identity is, is, this is a one for n by n's, matrices. So we're going to have that, and then we're going to have a t plus one over two factorial, a squared, t squared, plus, and eventually we have one over n factorial, a to the n, t to the n, 
plus. And so you can, th you can, so here's a little exercise. Differentiate this, differentiate this right hand side with respect to t and see that you get, so here's a little exercise because I know you're psyched about this exercise. Um, so show, I just grabbed the same thing, d um, by dt of e to the at equals a times e to the at. M by M matrix. Using this, right? So using it. This is what the exponential is. It is what the exponential is, right? So e to the e to the apple equals whatever one is in apple speak plus apple plus apple squared with a factorial plus apple cubed. That's what e is, right? E, do, e is this thing. So you can you can play around with this. So, but again, a to the n is in here. A to the power of n. So if we want to figure out what e to the power of a is, e to the power of a matrix A, we need to figure out actually all the powers, right? So we need, that's a little bit, so we need to know, uh, we need, you know, figure out a to the n for actually all of them, not just the limit. One, two, three, we need all of them, right, to determine So e to the at. So to solve that problem, we have to do that. Totally nuts. All right. So we've just exponentiated a matrix. I think that's cool. All right. So that's one other example. What about, uh, so we've done Markov things. This is differential equations. So solving, so this is example three. We'll just have three examples. And then... I'll give you some, yeah. Solving uh, difference equations. So these are the discrete version or sort of cousins of differential equations. Difference equations. So I'll give you a little one. What about this one? So here's an example. Fn plus, uh, plus 1. Is that right like that? Yeah. Equals Fn plus Fn minus 1. It's a difference equation. And let's say that F0, where F0 equals F1 equals 1. This is Fibonacci, right, which was used what? So it's about 1100 AD, actually. What was this used to model? Do you know? Rabbit reproduction. <laughs> So you have two rabbits. In the first month, you won't have any more rabbits, but then they beget more rabbits. Yeah, anyway, so. So this is a very weird thing. This has all sorts of strangeness inside it. And so you can figure out how to solve this. You play around with it. There are lots of ways to do it, but there is a nice matrix version. So let's do that. Let's figure out a matrix version. So the monks, the monks suggest this, right? Lots of people, lots of monks, figured, you know, solve this problem in different ways. They suggest thinking about this. Think about a vector. Let's think about it like this one. Fn uh, equals, and we'll put in, I'll put in Fn plus 1. We'll put in Fn plus 1 here and Fn here. Oh, I should put that up, right? Sorry. Are we good? I think we're good. I'll put that. Ah, press a button. Yeah. So. so if we did this, let's matrixify it. And we'll say, uh, we could do it like this. We could say Fn plus 1, Fn equals, it'll be a bit like the first one we did. We want it to depend on Fn minus 1 here. This is, right, so this is, this guy here is Fn plus 1, the vector Fn plus 1. This vector here is Fn. 
right? So if this is 17 and 16, this is 16 and 15. It's a bit funny because Fn appears here and here, but you know, we can do this. Because, right, so Fn plus 1 depends on these, these two. Fn plus 2 also depends on Fn. So let's put in 2 by 2 matrix. So what's the, what's the, what is here? Fn plus 1 is something times Fn plus something times Fn minus 1. That's what goes here. So what's that? 1 and 1. Good. Fn is some amount of Fn and some amount of Fn minus 1. Just 1 and a 0. Good. So that little matrix there, this tiny little 2 by 2, is full of craziness because it gives us the Fibonacci series and that gives us funny things to do with flowers and pine cones and golden ratios and all sorts of stuff. So there's a lot of weirdness in this. All right. So we need to... Um, Compute this guy, 1, 1, 0, sorry, 1, 1, this to the power of n to find, uh, I'm calling them capitals, to, to find Fn. So th this is the game now. So the game. So once again, it's a, it's a power, and that's a simple little matrix. But the Fibonacci numbers are, well, they're not, it's not obvious, right? It's not obvious how they. I mean, we know what they are, but it's hard to say, to yell out to someone, what's the 47th um, Fibonacci number? You've got me using 47. All right. Um, unless you're very special. Okay. Uh, so, so there's another good example. And we'll come back to this one. It's so magnificent. Um, and actually, when I did linear algebra, that was, I think, I'm going to say it's all of it, but I think that was half of it might have been the whole entire final exam was just do this, solve this thing. You had three hours to do it. Really delicious. Okay, so, um, but for some reason, for some reason, there, we'll find some really fun things in here. One plus root five over two is in here, is inside this matrix. That number is, what's it called? Golden ratio, right. Let's give it a yellow, golden ratio. So there are other ways to, you know, mess around with this. But this is great, really good. All right, so I think, I think that's good. Um, and, you know, so you might want to do this just because you want to hurt yourself, a to the power of n, right? So lots of other reasons. That's what it actually says. Self-flagellation. Wow. Um, and I know I wrote these notes, so that's strange. Okay, so this is motivation. One, two, three. Three examples. Different things. A to the N. It appears a lot. It's pretty cool. Super cool. So to get there, so it turns out we're going to have to, right. Right, we need to Go through, and this is just, this is one part of this, to go through uh, eigenthings. And these will help in other ways. So these are good, at, uh, lots of different situations where these appear. So these help, um, uh, you know, all sorts of problems. Not just A to the N, but that's really a clear part. Um, all problems, uh, including... Of course, AX equals B, including that. All right. OK, good. <laughs> I don't need to say that. OK. So it's square matrices. And um, yeah, we're kind of, now we're interested in so a to the x uh, t equals, let's say, x, x to the t plus 1. This kind of thing, this kind of problem. So, uh, you know, our focus is on a as a gadget, right? As a gadget, as some sort of device, right, that, that maps, uh, maps x 
of t, if you like, in Rn to x of t uh, plus 1 in Rn. Or it could be just x to x prime, something like that. Right? It could be something that rotates. It doesn't. So we're moving, we're collapsing a little bit from our rectangle story, right? where we could go from our m Rn to Rm. So it's just, we're just staying in that one world. All right. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, let's do an example. Okay, good. <coughs> so the question was you know, early on, right? How do you find this? How do you find these things? So let's let's look again. Let's use some monk approaches, and then we'll find out the grand story for solving this, which has something to do with null spaces. <laughs> so you don't have to learn anything new ever. Good. <coughs> Kidding. God, who erased this? Hmm. Oops. Eek. <coughs> okay. Palimpsest. Good. All right. Word of the day. There you go. So, uh, okay. So let's do an example. Which will have something hidden in it that's not obvious straight away. Let me see if I can remember it. Uh, let's just do this. A equals 1, a half a half 1. So 2 by 2. It takes vectors in two dimensions, sends them to other vectors in two dimensions. There's something special about this matrix. There's a quality of this matrix that we like. It's symmetric. Awesome. Okay. Mm. Note. Uh, A equals A transpose. This will be a huge deal for what we're doing. Right? This will be alarmingly amazing. Super incredible. And AA transpose and A transpose A, they're symmetric. They're always symmetric. So even when we take these rectangular matrices and find reasons to create AA transpose and A transpose A, we automatically make symmetric ones. So that's an important thing to remember. Okay. Okay, so the... Let's just, I'm going to give you a few examples. So we're going to multiply a few vectors and see what it does, see what A does to them. So, so, and again, it's monks suggest. Suggest this one, okay? We're, going, we're leading up to a general thing. I'm going to say, all right, well, let's multiply 2, 0. Vector 2, 0. So you can do this. Suggest this. Try it. 1, a half, a half, 1. To be clear, it doesn't have to be symmetric, right? This work, what we're going to do is work, we'll work for all matrices. Just symmetric ones have a special aspect to them. So what do we get back? We get 2 and 1, right? So that's not, this is not what, we were, what we've been seeing, right? This is not in that spirit. Okay? So this is not equal to... 2, 0. So we have a mo moment of sadness, but let's see. It's okay. It's okay. Graham Schmidt, look at that. Um, I guess I'll draw a few of these. Uh, let's say we start here. We've got 2. This is going to be x1, x2. And we've got 2, 0. This is 2. This is our initial vector, 2, 0. That got sent to here, this vector, to 1. Right, so A times 2, 0 maps it to this. Well, let's do it again, because we're kind of thinking about these powers, right? So A squared, 2, 0. We've already done it. It's A, it's going to be 1, a half, a half, 1, times this 2, 1 part, 2, 1. So what do we get there? There's a 1, there's 2, plus a half. It's starting to hurt our brains. This is 2 and a half. I'll write it like that, actually. Or 5 halves. And there's a 1 and a 1, 2. So, still not doing it, right? So, uh, the monks have betrayed us, perhaps, but let's see. I mean, I'm sure they haven't. So, two and a half. So, this is, let's put it out here, and two. I'm not sure if my brain can handle another one. So, this is 
2 and 1 half and 2. So we'll call this one, let's call this one x0, we'll call this one x1, and we'll call this one x2. So A is sending these characters to here. <whistles> oh, ho, ho. damn. Ah, I have to leave now. Okay, so fire it, automatically fire it. Right, okay. <coughs> jail, straight to jail. Okay. Um, okay, so should we do one more? We can do one more. Do one more. You're psyched to do one more. Let's do one more. Let's see what that does. Wow, what a horrible mess. Who did this? Okay, so let's do one more. We're going to do a cubed times 2, 0. And we're, we're part of the way there. We've already got our 1, a half, a half 1. And this thing is a 2 and a half, so I'll write as 5 halves. And a 2. Good. So we get 5 halves plus 1. You can help me when I go wrong. 5 halves plus 1, so 7 halves, so it's 3 and a half. And then 5 quarters plus 2. It's hurting a little bit. So 13 quarters. And so that's 3 and a quarter. Which is interesting. So now we're... Where are we now? We're changing colors for no reason at all. So this is going to be up here. It's a little further out. It's 3 and a half and 3... Yeah, three and a half and three quarters. Did I get it right? We'll call this x3. So it's actually kind of moving in a certain direction. All right, let's see what was going on here. The monks were sneaky. All right. What's going on? Okay. So let's try some others. Okay, let's try a few other vectors. Right? This is again, this is monks. The monks are saying try some more. So we're gonna try we're gonna try this one. Let's do A times uh, one one. So one, a half, a half, one, times one, one. So write, get, get out what that is, and then over here we'll do A times, and I've got it as one minus one. So I'll put it down here, A times one minus one. Yes. So compute those. Actually, whenever you multiply something by a, a, a vector of all ones, it's essentially saying sum up everything. It's a little summing thing. So it's this. So it's one plus a half and a half plus a one. So what have we got there? You should have three halves and three halves. And let's do a nice little thing. We'll factor it out and we get one, one. So A times one, one. Same. Same Z's. Oh, damn. Okay. What about this one? One and a half. So this is... 1 minus a half, so we get a half. That's an attempt to write the word, right? A half, and then we have a half minus 1, so minus a half. And that is a half 1 minus 1. Yeah, right. Okay. So we're kind of getting the story. So there are, there are some vectors lying around for which A does this special thing. So this is going to make it, we, we'll get to it, but A to the power of N, very simple. How A acts in this case is very simple, right? So A to the power of N times 1, 1. You're always going to get back 1, 1. You're just going to get 3 halves, 3 halves, 3 halves, 3 halves. 
So A's action on 1, 1 and 1 minus 1 are very simple. So we see are very simple. So it's, not, it's effectively just multiplying them by 3 halves or a half. Okay. So we can also see then that a to the power, so different to this, right? A, a squared, a cubed, we kept getting different vectors. They're not the same vectors. They're sort of moving around. They're changing in length, but they're moving around. So a to the n times 1, 1, what's that going to be equal to? We, right. And a to the n times 1 minus 1 equals same thing. Now, it's not just 1, 1, right? So it's also it's any vector pointing in that direction. So this is important. It's not just um, 1, 1 and 1 minus 1. It's any multiple, right? So 7, 7 is good. 17, 17. You know, etc. Right? They all work. They all have this property. So in fact, it's a subsp It's um, a likes subspaces, and um, these two subspaces. So one of them is uh, every x that equals c times one one. C is an element of the real numbers, and every x that equals c times 1 minus 1, again, where c is an element of r. Like these two subspaces. We thought a lot about subspaces, right? They came out as null spaces and row spaces and column spaces and left null spaces. So it's not just vectors. But we can think about basis vectors. OK. All right. Good, good. So let's go back to this example over here that was a bit messy and figure out what's going on. So back to our first example. Let's just all back to 2, 0. What's going on with this one? So the monks say, insert monks, right? Meaning, you know, I'm just giving it to you. We'll figure out how to do this ourselves. Um, Let's express these in terms of 1, 1, and, and 1, minus 1. Let's do that. 1, 1, and 1, minus 1. What's a, what can we put here and here? Something plus something. 1's, right? Right, so it's 1, it's one times this one, and... 1 times this one. So we get 1, 1, we get a 2, and these balance out. So this is a better basis. This is a good basis for A. A likes these vectors so much that we'll, we'll, we should use that as a basis instead of, right? So for this A, um, 1, 1 and 1 minus 1 are a better basis They're a natural basis, natural basis. Um, that's not quite the right word there, but then a more natural, more natural, more natural basis than uh, 1, 0, 0, 1. So every A, we have to do this, right? We have to figure out its right, its, its correct basis. When we think about these A to the power of N things. So this is better because. Oh, I'll take photos and I'll raise some things. Okay. We're getting there. Take the I have to do this. We had compulsions. All right. Okay. This is gone. So why is this? Why do we do this? Okay, so now. Now we've got a much easier thing. So a to the n, so now see this. So a to the n times this thing that was a bit complicated before, 
times 2, 0. This was hard. If we write it as a to the n times uh, 1, 0, sorry, 1, 1 plus 1 minus 1, same vector, but we're, kind of ex we're expressing it in, in, the, in these really nice vectors that a likes. So that's a to the power of n times 1, 1 plus a to the power of n times 1 minus 1. And we showed before that these are these vectors that it really likes. So all of this horribleness, this is a 2 by 2, you have to multiply it over and over and over. We can just replace it by 1, 1, and 1 minus 1. And so what goes here and here? What goes here? Yep, 3 halves the end. Plus, and this one will be a half to the n. That's a sad little n. Kind of like A.B. de Villiers right now. Poor guy. Okay. A half to the power of n. Captain of South Africa, obviously. Okay, so, um, so what's hap what happens actually as n grows? What happens, what happens to this thing? Yeah, it gets toasted, right? And actually dies away exponentially. So this is decays exponentially, right? Half times a half times a half times a half. And this one goes boom, right? This one grows exponentially. So what's really happening is for this matrix, if we take a, we, well, we had our, I guess I had, Mm, all right, okay, fine. So we like these, it likes these directions. Sad. So this is 1, 1 in this direction. That's its really favorite direction. And this is 1 minus 1. And so we had this one example here, it was 2, 0. And it, it went up and then across a little bit and then across a little bit. If we multiply by it, right, it's jumping, it's jumping. And really, it's, it's following a path that's going in this direction. And if we'd started a little bit below, we'd go out, we'd, we'd, be, we'd follow up there as well. So this looks like this, looks like this. Uh, and in general, we get this kind of thing. And we get a, a symmetric structure over here. And this would go in this direction. It's going to disappear in this direction. So if we started with minus 1, minus 1, it would grow that direction as well. So, so um, A grows in this direction, grows X uh, in this direction, if you like. This is the subspace it likes, and it crushes them in this direction. So these ones go here, this actually goes out, everything that's, right? And then A crushes this direction. Cool. It's hopping, right? So 2, 0 hops to here, and then hops to here, and then hops to here. If you say take something that's just a bit above 2, 0, it will hop just a bit above, just a bit above. It's not a smooth flow, right? The points hop. Uh, vectors hop along these lines. Right, so eventually every vector ends up either out here or down here. Groovy. And so much more to say. Um, this one here, that's good. Good. And so we, we have a name for this, and because it was figured out by very smart Germans, it comes from a German. So, um, so the terminology is uh, 1 and 1 minus 1 are eigenvectors, vectors of A, and this means self, 
right? So there's selfie stories. Yes, I know. Finally, the world has caught up with eigenvectors. Okay, selfies. Um, and then uh, we would say, so we had these two numbers. We had three halves and a half. So three halves, which is paired with this one, and a half are uh, eigenvalues. All over the place. Quantum mechanics is full, full of this silliness. Eigenvalues. And in fact, we would say, and so there's one thing here. So there's one piece, two pieces, and then three. And we would actually say that um, this thing, uh, x equals c times 1, 1. c is an element of r. And what we had before, x equals c times 1 minus 1. So every vector that's in the 1, 1 direction, every vector that's in the 1 minus 1 direction, C um, uh, eigenspaces of A. They're thin, right? They're just here. These parts aren't eigenspaces. No eigenspace out here. Right? It's just these, again, it's these pieces. What can you tell me about these two vectors here? 1, 1, and 1, minus 1. They're orthogonal. Okay, so that's all. That that's true. They're orthogonal. Crazy truth that we'll get to is that um, if a equals a transpose, we'll you know we'll get deeply into what it is. Then a's eigenvectors are orthogonal. And they form a really nice basis, right? They form a beautiful basis. And form a, a beautiful, a great a basis, a, a, a really a splendid, let's use splendid. Spiffing would be good. You can put it in spiffing. A splendid basis for Rn. Ah, Rn. So let me just finish by saying, so next, next is this. Oh, I'm so sorry. Next, next we will solve. This problem, A, V equals lambda V, and we'll call it V from now on. All right? That's where we're going on Thursday. Thank you. It's great. If you did not pick up your exams and your, your exam and your assignment, they're here. They're all in packages. So just grab one box of stuff. Thank you. Bye. <coughs>